Hello everyone, it's Carrie. It's been a while, but I'm back with a Patreon collab video. Today I'm working on Gert from the comic I Hate Fairyland. Gert, or Gertrude, is the main character in the world of I Hate Fairyland, written and drawn by my favorite comic artist, Scotty Young. Gertie is a girl who got stuck in a wacky world called Fairyland when she was a kid. After 30 years in this bizarre place, she turned into an unaging, grumpy warrior who's on a quest to find her way home. Alongside her not-so-enthusiastic pal, Larry, she, she tries and usually fails to get back to the real world. After a bit of a break, the comic came back with a new series in November of 2022, and this time it's about an adult Gertie returning to Fairyland. The doll I made is sort of a mix between the look of Gertie as a kid and an adult, and I also wanted to make her with a similar vibe to my Diesel Punk Fairies or my Tank Girl dolls you may have seen if you follow me over on Instagram or Facebook. As I mentioned, this is also a Patreon collab video, and the patrons and I got together and decided on a theme, Novel Creations, where we chose characters from some of our favorite books. Make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video so you can see all of their fabulous work and the information on where you can see more of their creations. So getting started, I used an Ever After High doll for this look, and I gave her some very extensive carving before I got started. I'm going to show you here my first try at the face up. I was really unhappy with it. It just was a little much, <laughs> but I wanted to share with you what it looked like because I removed the upper part of the face right under the la lower lash line. And um, I did a little bit of sanding and to, for a more gradual blend so I didn't have to remove the entire face after I did the mouth and everything. And so I went back in and decided to do both eyes sort of squinted and uh, rather than the big googly eye look I, it just was um kind of jarring to look at and i just wasn't happy with it i don't know going back i maybe what do you think should i have stayed with that first crazy look let me know what you think so i'll just be going through the process of doing the eyes mainly and um, some of the shading since i have done the mouth already i was really struggling with this face up i've never uh, I've been I've made hundreds of dolls I've been doing this for like 11 years and I have never redone a face up like that and I think in the end the reason my I was struggling so much was because I just didn't like the fact that she was missing a tooth <laughs> and I was I had I just couldn't make Gert without having her tooth be knocked out it's just the character and I think I just kind of had an inner struggle about that because I thought she'd be so much cuter if she had all her teeth, but that's just not the character. So um, I'm using, I, as usual, I started out with several coats of MSC and now I'm going in with some sort of a turquoise to do some shading under the eye area. I like to use blues and yellows in the face to give it more of a, a natural skin tone look. If you have a large spot that needs to be toned down, like if you add too much blush or you just you need something erased, using one of those kneaded erasers really is better for me than using an actual eraser because it kind of lifts everything around it without making a big uh, erase mark. So in this video, I'm gonna be working on the rest of the space up. I'm going to be working on the costume and accessories and the hair. So make sure to stay tuned and especially make sure to stay tuned till the end of the video. Again, my patrons and I, we voted on a theme for our collab, which we do this about twice a year. We get together and vote on the theme that we wanna use and then we each make a doll to go along with that theme. And during the process of a few months, we talk about it on our Facebook group and share photos of our progress and get ideas off of each other and advice. And it's lots of fun. So make sure to, again, stay tuned to the end of the video and check out these amazing dolls. These are some of my favorites that we've made so far. And uh, you can also see the information for their Instagram or, or YouTube channels or just about the artist along with the doll. 
So again, please, please check those out and follow them on Instagram. And uh, you'll love it. You'll love the dolls. They're just amazing. And thank you. Extra special thanks to my patrons. Even those who weren't able to make it all this time. Uh, your support was great and it makes it a lot of fun and those who made it all you guys just blew me away as usual I'm doing some shading around the eye just to make it look more like a sphere using a couple of different colors I tend to use a light blue and uh, like a terracotta in those areas they make a nice like purpley blend to for shadow and then I wanted to give her a nice side eye so to do that I was just making a little dot where I wanted the pupil to be so that it would kind of land right and make sure that she's one both eyes are going in the right direction so I just make the dot and then I have it like look at me just to see if it works before I go in with the rest of the eye Since I didn't share the carving of the mouth and the drawing of the mouth, just a little bit about that. I did carve it extensively beforehand, and then I did a flat, uh, I carved it flat in the open space where her teeth are and just drew those in. And then again, I drew the gap because Gertie has, um, her teeth have been knocked out in Fairyland. <laughs> By the way, if you're interested in joining my Patreon and joining in the collabs and um, getting information like uh, we do tips and tricks, uh, I do a monthly close-up clip where I do a close-up video of the work that I do, and then I do a level up lesson each month. Uh, so the link to that is in the description box below if you're interested in seeing what I have there. I also have a class over on Skillshare, a couple classes on Skillshare, and some uh, learning downloadables on Etsy. So check out the links in the description box below. So after a little bit of body blushing and shading onto the costume, I found these headbands that I like to use for leggings and I decided to use them for a t-shirt and for the leggings. They work perfectly. And by the way, I don't I don't usually cover the feet. It makes it hard to put the shoes on. So if I can avoid it, I just make it into like a, you know, cut off at the ankle. So I made the t-shirt and I'm using some puff paint with a paintbrush to do the little writing on her shirt. I made some straps for her arms and embellished them with studs. Also made some uh, fingerless gloves and then I wanted to, her shorts to be actual denim material so I dyed some denim uh, pink to match and made a pair of short shorts. So I hemmed this using some thermal bonding tape. Just because my stitches aren't that even and I didn't want it to show on the shorts. So I did all the hemming and then stitched them together. So doing a quick fit check and I wanted to make them super shredded looking like in the comic she has these yellow shreds coming down from them so I got some extra denim shredded it up and then I just used an alcohol marker to color it the yellow to match the rest of the yellow in the costume and then using some double-sided fabric tape I added them to the ends
I didn't worry about too much detail on the shorts because they'd be covered quite a bit with the different belts and straps and things. So I'm using this yellow vinyl to cut some of the belting. She has some around her waist and then she has a big utility belt. And then she has this uh, like pistol holder for on the leg. So just measure it and stitch it together and then I can just scoop it right up on the leg. And then for the utility belt, I just folded over some extra vinyl and made little pockets and stitch those onto a larger belt. And I added a bead to them to look like a closure. So I made the utility belt to sit on her hips and now I just need to make the skull piece that goes in the center. And to do that, I'm gonna use some two-part epoxy sculpt. And I'm just going to take equal parts of each. And I just can't work with this stuff wearing gloves. I did contact the company and it's non-toxic, but it can be, um, it can cause allergic reactions. It has it with me, so I just continue to use it without gloves. But make sure to wear gloves like you're supposed to. <laughs> It's not supposed to be toxic, though. that's why I feel comfortable using it without gloves. So I'm making it into uh, the skull from the comp. Just checking it for size against the belt as I go. It's got some teeth and bones that come out the sides, so I'm just rolling up some extra clay to sculpt that on. I'm using my sculpting tool to carve out the eyes. Looks a little like Jack Skellington. So I'm putting it on the belt and sort of giving it a little bit of a bend. And I actually left it there overnight, just, just right on the doll so it wouldn't lose its shape. I also sculpted a knee pad on one of the sides. Now I'm going to paint up a pair of Monster High boots. And I find that if I sand them up really good, I'm using a really rough, like an acrylic nail, nail file. And if I really take the time to sand them down really good, that the paint sticks to it better. So once I sanded it down, I just used some alcohol to dry out any oils that may be on it and, and clean it up. And then I painted them black. And then I also painted the skull. So to cover the holes on these boots, I'm using some of the stretchy vinyl, and I'm just going to glue it right over the holes. And I really liked how it looked. It gave it a little bit more realism and um, a, a little bit more detail than just a stiff vinyl. So I just heated up a glue stick with a lighter rather than heat up my glue gun for one project, but uh, just used that glue stick for that and glued it over the boot cut it up, and then I also use the lighter to sort of melt the edges of the vinyl. I added some extra straps to wrap around the boot, like buckles, and use some eyelets to give it some detail. So the accessory that I wanted to make was this huge uh, hatchet, or I don't know what this is called. Uh, if you know what it is, let me know in the comments below. I can't remember the name of this weapon, but um, I could have used this toy one, but it was a little bit too small, so I kind of used it as a little guide to draw my own. And I used some white foam board. I wish that I had some uh, black, but I painted it anyway. And it's, it's like a... It's just craft foam and it was kind of thicker and I used some glue stick to add them to a popsicle or not a popsicle stick a, like a lollipop stick and then I found kind of carving the edges of this stuff really made it look like a neat blade so 
also made it made the edges look a, a little bit rough and it kind of matched the comic I was really happy with it it's real lightweight too so you can have your doll hold it without it being too heavy so I took some of my embellishments and um, added some studs to it after I painted it up I also had this little pistol for her holder on the side that I customized it's just a toy one Now for my favorite part, I use this red puffy paint to add this blood. Um, there's a lot of scenes in the comic where uh, if you read it, it's great. I suggest it. I suggest that you do. It's a lot of fun. It's a really creative and it, it, one of the reasons he's my favorite comic book artist. But um, this really fits the character, so I decided to add these this red droplets to it. So when, um, when I'm working on a bunch of face-ups at once, I keep them in this case just to keep the dust off of them. <laughs> so I'm pulling that out from, if you uh, follow me over on Instagram, those are my vampires. You may want to check those out. So I'm just adding her to my holder so I can curl her hair up. And I just added a little bit of unscented gel to her hair, combed it through, and then gave her some serious curls. Even after this video, I went back and curled it again to give her more of these like Goldilock locks, uh, cur locked curls, um, like storybook curls, because that's what Gert really has in the comic. Because I ended up pulling them apart too much, and it just looked like her hair was really curly. But I wanted them to be like here. You can see their her hair is really curly, but it doesn't look any more like those locks. So I went back and gave her some more of those. And then she has these kind of wild bangs in the front. So I used this little razor to give her a razor cut in the front, and um, and then I smoothed down the bangs to hang down a little bit better. So storing all of the clothes away as I worked on other parts of the doll, pulling it back out to give her her costume. After giving her her costume or putting her costume on, I glossed her eyes or added her head back on and then glossed the eyes and gave her some eyelashes and she was ready to go. So stay tuned here in a moment for all of the reveals for the collaborators and check out their YouTube channels. Some of them have YouTube channels. Check out their videos and thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. And again, thank you so much for being here and watching and extra special thanks to my patrons. You guys are so wonderful. Thank you so much for your support. And I thoroughly enjoy doing these collabs with you. Can't wait for the next one. Talk to y'all soon. Thanks. Bye.